This is a quick video on how to access the radiance and ambient temperature hourly data uh, for any location in the world. Now, one of the first things we'll need to access this data is GPS coordinates for the site. So we'll copy these and then we'll come to our web browser and just type PVGIS and hit enter. Then we'll click on the first link and that'll take us to this PVGIS website. And we are interested in solar radiation. So we'll click with the solar radiation tool button. Next, within the map here, we're going to enter our latitude and longitude coordinates that we had copied. So we've got our latitude first, and then enter the longitude second, and click go. You'll see that takes you to the project location. And then we're going to click on this monthly data tab if it's not already selected. And we want to span the data from the earliest start year to the latest start year. So we'll go from 2005 to 2016. We'll select global, horizontal, irradiation, and average temperature. So the two data points we're interested in. And we'll visualize the results, which you can see down here. And then we're going to click CSV button to download the data. I'll now open that. And right away, I'm going to do a file save as. And I'll save it to a particular folder of interest, radiance data. And instead of saving it as a CSV file, we're going to change the file type to Excel workbook. Give it a unique number and click Save. Now we need to process the data. So we'll select this first column where all the data is located, then click this data button at the top, and then click text to columns. Then we'll click next, next, finish. And we'll, we want to replace the data already here, so we'll click OK. You can see that then breaks it up into individual cells with data populated there so that we can uh, manipulate the data. So now I'm going to copy these headings over here and we've got a bunch of years and a bunch of, of monthly numbers. So we want to find the average over all those years for all the months. So we're going to use a function called sum if and select all the data in this first column and we want to give this uh, dollar signs here. And to do that, I'm pressing function four on my keyboard. Then it asks for the criteria. So we're interested in the month name. And then finally, we need the sum range. Actually, I, I did this wrong. This should be here in the month category. And then the sum range will be this one. And again, we'll click F4 so we get the dollar signs. That's it. And then since this is summing them for 12 years, we have to divide by 12 because it was from 2005 to 2016. Now you notice that gets us a pretty good average of what the January monthly uh, or the monthly irradiance data for January is. And now we can just drag this down for all the months and we get a distribution of all the months. We're also going to want to copy this formula and do the same thing for temperature. But instead, we'll just drag this over to the temperature data, hit enter, and again, then drag this down for all the months. So from this, you can evaluate um, by seeing what the minimum data point is here. And you can determine that it's in June that the minimum monthly irradiance um, is. So what we can then do is change our worst month to June. And that will, in we do that to ensure there's enough water even during the lowest irradiance month of the year. Um, so now we still need hourly irradiance and temperature data. So we're gonna come back to PVGIS 
and we're going to click on um, hourly data because that's what we're interested in. Again, we want all the years. Uh, sorry, daily data is what we're interested in. And we want uh, the month of June because that's the worst month. We're going to select the local time. So it's not based on the UTC time zone, but the local time zone. And we want radiance. And the slope here is the slope of your solar panels. Now it can be common to go with the slope of 15, which is a minimum recommended slope for solar panels. Um, if you were at a location that was further away from the equator, you might want to use that latitude number. But for now, we'll just use 15 since this is fairly close to the equator. And then the azimuth is the direction it, that the panels are facing. Um, and zero azimuth means they're facing south. 180 would be north. Um, and we want to make sure they're facing directly south since this location is in the northern hemisphere. And then the other data point that we need is the daily temperature profile. So then we'll click visualize results. You can see those results here. This is the hourly profile of radiance. And then we're going to download the CSV file again. I'll open that. And again, the first thing we want to do is a file save as. Put it in our folder location and change the save file type as to Excel workbook, give it a unique number and hit save. And again, all our data is going to be here in this first column and we want to break that into columns. So we're going to click data up here and then text to columns. Next, next, finish. And we want to replace the data that's there. Now, this one shows the uh, first value in <clears throat> the three that we're given, and that's the global number. That's the one that we're interested in. So we're going to uh, select the hours from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. or 1900. Copy those, and then we can just paste those into our design file. We'll do the same thing with temperature. That's in this column here. Copy those and then paste those into our design file. And that's a quick summary of how to get hourly irradiance and ambient temperature data from PVGIS. Thanks.